We showed that if f is left adjoint to g, then for each b object b, the unit on component b, a to b, is the initial object in b over g. And for each a object a, the co-unit on component a is the terminal object in f over a. It turns out that the converse also holds. Precisely, we let g and f be functors, then 1, the following are equivalent. a, that g is a joint, and b, for each b object b, the category b over g has a chosen initial object. And chosen here could mean applying a sufficiently strong version of the axiom of choice, or having some other way to pick out an initial object generically. And we also have two that the following are equivalent. A, that F is co-adjoint, and B, for each A object A, the category F over A has a chosen terminal object. Let's prove one, that A implies B. If G is a joint, then there exists a left adjoint F, unique up to natural isomorphism, with unit eta and co-unit epsilon. We proved in the video the universal properties of unit co-unit in a joint situations, that for each B object B, A to B is initial in B over G which is what we wanted to show. Note that our choice of f gave us the choice of the initial object. Conversely, for b implies a, we need to construct the co-adjoint f. Suppose for each b object b, hb from b to g xb is initial in b over g. By the universal mapping property of the initial object, there exists this unique amorphism kf from xb to xb prime, such that the square commutes. So we define the functor f by taking the morphism f to the amorphism kf. And by the universal mapping property of h, we see that f is functorial. And also by the definition of f, h is a well-defined natural transformation since the square above becomes a naturality square. So h will become our unit for the adjoint situation. We still need to define the co-unit e and we do this on objects by using the universal mapping property of H. That A to GA you see here should be an HGA, by the way. In other words, we define EA to be the unique amorphism such that HGA followed by GEA is equal to the identity on GA. And then by the universal mapping property, we see that E is unique. Let's verify that E is a well-defined natural transformation. So we need to show that for an amorphism G, the following diagram commutes. Again, we use the universal mapping property of H to show this. In other words, if G, G, E, A, H, G, A is equal to G, E, A prime, F, G, G, H, G, A, then the square commutes. To do this, we will show that each of these expressions are equal to G, G. We have G, G, E, A, H, G, A is equal to G, 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 E, A, H, G, A and we have that the underlying part here is equal to the identity by the definition of EA, and so we get back GG. Also, GEA prime FGG HGA is equal to GEA prime GFG HGA, and the underlying part here is equal to HGA prime GG by the naturality of H, and so we get GEA prime HGA prime GG, and the underlying part here is equal to the identity by the definition of E. And so we see we get back GG, and that is what we wanted to show. Therefore, E is a well-defined natural transformation. Finally, we show the triangle identities for an adjoint situation. By the definition of E, we already have that one of the triangle identities is satisfied. Now we show the other, namely that for a B object B, E, F, B, F, H, B is equal to the identity on F, B. By the universal mapping property of H, it is enough to show that G, E, F, B, F, H, B, H, B is equal to G on the identity of F, B, H, B, which is equal to H, B. We have that G, E, F, B, G, F, H, B, H, B is equal to G, E, F, B, H, G, F, B, H, B by the naturality of H, which is equal to H, B by the triangle identity. And that is what we wanted to show. Therefore, F is left adjoint to G, which completes the proof for part one. And we omit the proof for part two since it is completely analogous 